Yahar, har, me matey. Hmm. I'm actually getting better at this pirate thing. Hey there, Captain Crunch. Hey, I mean, uh, ahoy. Yeah, just one question. What are we doing on a pirate ship? Ahar, what else? We're in search of lore from the far corners of this world. Untold stories, untold riches. And I've had this nifty hat for so long now, figured it was finally high time that I got some use out of it. Wait, if you're looking for lore, you could have just gone to the library. They have tons of books on that sort of thing. Library? <laughs> Must be some French slang. And besides, sailing out in the middle of the ocean, going to who knows where is kind of dangerous. Do you even know what you're doing? Why am I the sensible one here? Nonsense! This is perfectly safe. I've got everything under control. Besides, what could possibly go wrong? I have a pretty good imagination. Huh. Do you, you remember when I said that I had everything under control? I think I can recall that, yeah. Well, I lied. Not surprised, honestly. Yeah. Oh, hey! You know what would be extremely convenient right about now? A title card sliding onto the screen, allowing us a cheap way out of this mess. Where on earth are you? Oh, there it is. Equestria is a world topped up with fantastic beasts and breathtaking lands, something that we as fans love learning more about with each passing episode. We relish the appearance of a new species or a new location popping up in the show. However, in most cases, the ideas didn't come out of thin air, and more often than not, interesting lore exists for these creatures we see in the show. One of my personal favorite pieces of lore that's made its way into MLP has to be the Changelings. In the show, Changelings are these equine creatures, insect in appearance, who survive on love from other species. They show up many times in various episodes, often being the key antagonists. What many don't realize, however, is that Changelings in the show are actually inspired by a much darker, popular folklore all around Eastern Europe. As the tale goes, Changelings were believed to be children of the fairies, who had been left in place of human children stolen by the fairies. These Changelings would look exactly like their human counterparts, but act and behave a little bit differently, often strangely in comparison to other children, very much like the Changelings in the show with their ability to shapeshift into their target. So, why did the fairies swap out their children for human ones? While there are many different versions of the folklore, the main reason that kept cropping up is that fairies needed human parents to raise their fairy children, as they cannot do it themselves for various reasons. So, like in the show in a way, they do feed on the love of the human parents, by being raised and taking care of them. Pretty spooky. What I like about the Changeling's designs here is how intricate they are. We had no idea that they were going to get this huge makeover, are they even capable of doing so? From what I can gather, mystical changelings don't have the power to evolve, so it's nice to see the show keeping the original concepts by only having the changelings change appearance. You get it? But also the idea of disguising themselves to their host body type in order to blend in and take control from the inside. Smart, eh? Griffins are another one of my favorite mythological creatures. Griffins themselves are an idea dating back as early as 3000 BC and have many different interpretations depending on the culture. They're almost always depicted as a mix between a lion and an eagle, considered to be the king of all creatures, and are often known for guarding treasure and priceless possessions. Griffins are similar to the ancient Egyptian idea of a sphinx. I like how both of these cultures just combine different types of animals just to get a new one. Regardless, it's safe to say that griffins are the most common of the mythical beasts mentioned here, being referenced in sources like Harry Potter, another classic piece of literature. And for the most part, the griffin lore doesn't really change all that much when compared to other creatures. They're just kind of doing their own thing. In the show, griffins are portrayed to follow very close to their lore. In the episode Lost Treasure of Griffin Zone, we're getting into a whole culture of griffins who are greedy, extremely protective of their belongings, and only willing to offer assistance if the price is right. It's even said in mythology that griffins make their nests with gold nuggets, something that is actually depicted in the show itself during the griffin backstory in Lost Treasure of Griffin Stone. As far as things go, the show stays very true to the lore of the griffins.
And just like griffins, unicorns have a rich history lasting literally thousands of years. Originally thought by Greek writers to actually have legitimately existed in India of all places, unicorns have often been described as a horse-like creature sporting a single large spiraling horn protruding from its forehead. And those long horns are not without reason. In old times, narwhal tusks were actually traded and believed to be unicorn horns. If you're unfamiliar with narwhal tusks, they can be pretty massive. And as such, many old depictions of unicorns show them having these oddly long horns. Pretty cool. Now, obviously in the show, unicorns have much smaller, more blunted horns, looking nothing like the unicorns in lore. And as far as magic is concerned, unicorns in real life are never really depicted as having the kind of magic we see in the show. They sometimes have a certain magical property, depending on the country of origin, but certainly aren't levitating or blasting anything with their magical prowess anytime soon. Pegasi are Greek, coming from what was laughed at from Medusa the Snake Monster, you know, Eyes of Stone, remember her? Well, he came what was left of her, it was gross, don't ask me. Later in life, he lived on the Alpha Blipis and helped out Zeus with his thunderbolt crafting and fun stuff like that. The Disney movie did stretch much of the original role in Greek myth, but from what I could find, he was never directly affiliated with Hercules, but Disney does need those cute animal sidekicks, so it's like, whatever. Draconicuses are a mythical beast made for the show! Var and Faust made them all up. But out of all the mythical beasts, again, Draconicuses are more similar to a chimera than anything else, both in design and function. Again, aspects Lauren added were Discord's chaotic nature, his specific animal parts, and of course his personality. Chimeras, on the other hand, whilst also making a brief appearance in the show, are another one-of-its-kind beast, having a fairly rich history in ancient Greek mythology. Chimeras are known to be this hideous hybrid creature, typically a mix of a lion, a snake, and a goat. It even breathes fire too. In the show, the only time the chimera is actually shown is part tiger rather than the traditional lion. I can't say I know why, but tigers are very fearsome all the same, so it's really no problem. Otherwise, MLB displayed the chimera perfectly. But now, we want to hear from you. What's your favorite lore mythology? What's made its way into MLP? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comment section below. We always enjoy hearing what you have to say. So with that, I want to thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like. As well, don't forget to subscribe and help support me for free, and it only takes a click. And speaking of support, why not head over to KP's channel for more excellent content. Annotations are on the screen and links in the description. So once again, thank you so much for watching. This is Ty and Dega signing out.